Hi everyone, so in this video on cost volume profit analysis, we're going to be looking at a few examples uh, regarding break-even and how to calculate break-even point in units and in dollars. So here we have the Doral company. They manufacture and sell pens. Currently 5 million units are sold per year at 50 cent per unit. Fixed costs are $900,000 per year, and variable costs are $0.30 cent per unit. So the first question is asking us to calculate the current annual operating income. So let's recall from our contribution margin income statement that we learned, we have sales minus variable cost is contribution margin. And from contribution margin, we're going to subtract fixed cost to get our operating income. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is calculate our sales. They tell us that we're going to, or that we currently sell 5 million units, and we sell them for 50 cents each. So that gives us sales of $2,500,000. Variable costs are... 30 cent per unit. So again, we've sold 5 million and we're paying 30 cents each for our pens that we're selling. So our variable cost is 1,500,000. So that brings us to a contribution margin of $1 million. Now, another way we could have done this is to kind of skip over calculating sales and variable cost since we're, 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 we are really looking for operating income here. And we know that contribution margin per unit is simply 50 cent minus 30 cent. So contribution margin per unit must be 20 cent. If we multiply that times the 5 million units, we get the $1 million. Now we can subtract our fixed cost from the 1 million. And they tell us the fixed cost are $900,000 per year. So that gives us an operating income, or current operating income, of $100,000. The next question asks us to calculate the present break-even point in revenues. So again, break-even point in revenues, we've got to remember the formula. We're taking fixed cost and divide that by the contribution margin ratio. So fixed cost, they tell us, are $900,000. And we need to divide that by the contribution margin ratio, which you remember is contribution margin divided by sales. So we have a couple of different numbers here that we can work with, and both of them will work depending on which way we want to think about this problem. So we can do it on a per unit basis. So we can look at these numbers here. So we could take 0.2 divided by 0.5, or 20 cent divided by 50 cent, or we could take, we could do one or the other, or we could take $1 million, which is the total contribution margin, divided by total sales. So the ratio is still the same. Either one will work. We just have to do one or the other. So this will give us a break-even point of two and a quarter million dollars. Okay, to break even. The next question tells us that there is a four cent per unit increase in variable cost. So how will that affect the operating income? Well, let's just start with contribution margin. We can we know that we can skip over sales and variable cost if we if we can figure out contribution margin. We know contribution margin is the number of units sold times the difference in the sales per unit and the variable cost per unit. Well, variable cost per unit originally was 30 cent, and the sales per unit was originally 50 cent. So if we add 4 cent to variable cost, that increases it from 30 cent to 34 cent, bringing our contribution margin per unit to 16 cent. Okay, so that is simply the 50 cent minus now 34 cent. Okay, so that's where the 16 cent is coming from. And that gives us an $800,000 contribution margin. 
We still have to subtract our fixed cost, which haven't changed, are still 900,000. So now we're gonna end up with an actual operating loss in this case, not an operating income, okay? The last question tells us that, that there's a 10% increase in fixed cost and a 10% increase in the number of units sold. How does this affect our operating income or what is the new operating income? So keep in mind, again, our income statement, our contribution margin income statement, sales minus variable cost is contribution margin. From contribution margin, we'll subtract fixed cost to get our operating income. So the current scenario, we're selling 500,000 units, or I'm sorry, 5 million units, and it says that there's gonna be a 10% increase in the number of units sold. So that's basically 110% of what we're currently selling. So a 10% increase added on to the current number of 5 million would be a 110% increase in what it, well, not an increase, a 10% increase would be 110% of itself. All right, and we'll multiply that times the current price per unit. That will give us a new sales revenue of two and three quarters million. $2,750,000. Now, variable cost is affected the same way. If there's a 10% increase in number of units sold, that will also affect our variable cost because variable cost is multiplied times the number of units sold. So we're gonna use that same number to calculate our total variable cost. And our variable cost per unit, these are independent scenarios, so we're not gonna use the variable cost from the part before. We're gonna use the original variable cost of 30 cent that gives us a new variable cost of $1,650,000. Now we can calculate our contribution margin of $1,100,000. Now again, we could have used our little shortcut that we know. Contribution margin is the number of units, which again, we have to multiply those times 1.1 or 110% to get the new number of units sold, times the contribution margin per unit, which we know is 20 cent. That gives us the 1,100,000. Now we can subtract out our fixed cost of $900,000. That gives us a new operating income. Oh, I'm sorry, they tell us that there's a 10% increase in fixed cost as well. So that's 900,000 times 1.1. So that actually gives us $990,000 in fixed cost. So a new operating income of $110,000. Now let's look at Diego Motors. They're a small car dealership, and on average they sell a car for $26,000, which they can purchase from the manufacturer for $22,000. Each month, Diego Motors pays $60,000 in rent and utilities and $70,000 for salesperson salaries. In addition to their salaries, salespeople are paid a commission of $500 for each car they sell. Diego Motors also spends $10,000 each month for local ad advertisements, and its tax rate is 40%. How many cars must Diego Motors sell each month to break even? So this particular question is asking for units to break even since it's talking about cars. So we're not really looking at dollars here. We're looking for units. So we need our units equation for break even, which is fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit. So we're gonna add up all of our fixed cost. So if we look through the problem, the first fixed cost we see is the fact that we pay $60,000 in rent and utilities. So that's our first fixed cost. We also pay our salespeople salaries of $70,000. Salaries are typically fixed, so when we hear the word salary, we know that's a constant number. And in addition to the salaries, they pay commission, and that's based on number of cars sold. So that's a variable cost because it changes depending on how many cars we sell. But then it also says that Diego Motors spends $10,000 each month for local advertisements. This does not depend on if we sell one car or 100 cars. We're still spending $10,000 each month, so that is another fixed cost that we have to add. 
Okay, so we've got all of our fixed cost, and we're going to divide that by the contribution margin per unit. So to get that, we need sales minus variable cost, which is contribution margin per unit. We need all that in units. So we sell every car on average for $26,000. So that's the sales price per unit for our cars. And our variable cost per unit, it says that we can buy them for $22,000. But let's not act too quickly here. There is also one more variable cost in here. And we've already mentioned it. It's that commission that we pay our salespeople on each car that they sell. That is also a variable cost. That one also has to be considered. So now we have all of our fixed cost divided by our contribution margin per unit, which is our sales per unit minus our variable cost per unit. Okay, so those are two variable costs. Now, if we do the math here, we end up with, we will have to sell 40 cars each month to break even. Okay, let's look at the next question. Diego Motors has a target monthly net income of $63,000. What is its targeted monthly operating income? How many cars must be sold each month to reach the target monthly net income of $63,000? Well, up to this point, our income statement only went down to operating income, if you'll look back in your notes. From operating income, we will subtract our taxes, and that will give us our net income. Okay, so anytime you see the word net, you know something's been taken out. So net income just means net of taxes. So in looking at this problem, they tell us our um, tax rate, in the problem, in, in the actual original problem, is 40%. So if the tax rate is 40%, then net income must be 60% of operating income. Now, knowing this is going to help us solve this problem here. So there's a couple of ways we can do it. The first way is we can look at this formula. We can take our target net income and divide that by 1 minus the tax rate. So let's solve it this way first. So our target monthly net income is $63,000 and 1 minus the tax rate of 40% is 0.6. So we end up with a target operating income of $105,000. Now, we could check ourselves to make sure this is right because we know that um, net income is 60% of our target operating income. So if we multiply $105,000 times 60%, we should get that $63,000 number, and we actually do. So we are happy. That works out. So another way we could do this is we know that the target net income of $63,000 is 60% of operating income. And operating income is what we're looking for. So now we have an algebraic expression, and we can just simply solve for x. So we can divide both sides by 0.6, and in doing that, we get X, or operating income, of $105,000. So either way works, whatever your brain likes better, either method will work for you. So now that we know the target operating income, we can solve for the second half of the question. How many cars, so again we're looking for units, must be sold each month to reach the target monthly net income of $63,000? But our formula that we know doesn't use net income. It uses target operating income. So that's why we had to solve for this number. So if we go back to the problem before, we've already found all of our fixed cost. So we have our $60,000 plus our $70,000 plus the $10,000 in advertisements. That's all of our fixed cost. Now we can add our target operating income, not target net income. That's not what our formula asks for. Target operating income. 
So that's our numerator. And divide that by our contribution margin per unit, which we found above, which was 26,000 minus 22,000 minus the 500. Okay, so that part didn't change. When we do that, we now find that we would have to sell 70 cars per month to have a target operating income of 105,000, which would give us a target net income, meaning after taxes, of $63,000.